Hey everyone, my name is Olaf and today I'll teach you how to make this exact animation in Blender 2.8 in Eevee. As always, it's going to be quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by going into the video sequencer. And then let's add the music, so uh, click add, then sound. And then you can download the music that I used in the link below, or you can use your own music for this tutorial. And then let's go back to Blender and open the file and uh, next to the file name you can see how many frames the soundtrack equals to so let's set the end frame to 5089 for this one so uh, let's play the music it works so let's go back to frame 1 and then back to the uh, 3d viewport okay so let's start off by deleting the cube so click x to delete the uh, cube and I click Add, Mesh, and then add a circle. And I click S to uh, scale up the circle. And I click R, X, then 90 to rotate the circle 90 degrees on the X axis. And then numpad 1 for the front view. And then let's go into edit mode. And I click E, left click, then S to scale up the extrusion. Okay, so let's go back to object mode. And then to the modifiers. Then add a subdivision surface modifier and then set the amount of subdivisions to one and then apply the modifier. And as you can see, when we go back to edit mode, we have an extra row in the middle. Okay, and then select the inner circle by holding in Alt while selecting one of the uh, vertices and then click H to hide the inner circle. Then go back to object mode. The next step of the tutorial is to add shape keys so that we can animate the transformation of the object. So uh, let's start off with the basis and the first key and then go into edit mode and then let's enable proportional editing so that uh, grabbing one vertex will affect the other vertices nearby. So uh, let's select one of the vertices and then click G to grab and then use the mouse wheel to increase the radius of the proportional editor. So just play around with the uh, proportional editor and uh, find a shape that you like. And then click tab to switch back to object mode. And as you can see, when we increase the value of the first key, we uh, get the animation. So let's open a new window and then go into the uh, graph editor. And then click I to keyframe the value of the first key. And then select the uh, first key in the graph editor. Then click uh, key and then bake sound to F curves. Let's set the highest frequency to 120 so that we have uh, from zero to 120 for the first key. And when we play the animation, you can see that the uh, animation matches the music. Okay, so now we need to do the same for the uh, rest of the keys. So uh, let's uh, pause the animation, go to frame uh, one, and then let's create a new key. And uh, then go into edit mode, and then select a new vertex, and then click G to grab, and then use the mouse wheel to increase or decrease the radius of the proportional editor. And then go back to object mode, and then click I to keyframe the uh, value. And uh, then go into the graph editor and select the second key, then click key, then bake sound to F curves, and uh, let's set it from 120 to uh, 250 for the second key. And then select the music, and then bake sound to F curves. Okay, so when we play the animation, you can see that uh, the second key works as well. So uh, let's pause the animation. And then uh, let's go back to frame one. And uh, let's create our uh, third key. So click tab to go into edit mode. And then uh, let's select a uh, new vertex. And click G to grab. And then uh, let's go back to object mode click I to keyframe the new value. 
then do the same for the uh, third key. So let's set it from uh, 250 to 350. And then select the uh, music. And then bake the sound to uh, the F curse once again. Okay, and uh, let's uh, test it. And as you can see, it works. So let's pause the animation once again. And uh, let's go back to uh, frame one. Okay, and then let's add the uh, fourth key. And then go into edit mode and then click G to grab. And then I to keyframe the new value. And for uh, this shape key, we will use the values from 350 to 600. And as you can see, I'm speeding up this part of the tutorial because we're doing the same over and over again. So let's uh, bake the sound. And uh, then let's play the animation to see that it works. Okay, it works. So let's pause the animation and go back to frame one. Okay, so now we have uh, two shape keys left. So uh, click on the plus sign, go into edit mode, click tab to go into edit mode, and then select uh, one of the vertices, and then click G to grab. And then let's go back to object mode, and then click I to keyframe, select the key, and bake the sound to the F curves, and then set this one from 600 to 1000. and then bake sound to F curves. And uh, then let's uh, play the animation. And right now we have uh, five different shape keys transforming the object. But we're going to add one more shape key that uh, scales up the circle and uh, affects all of the other shape keys as well. So uh, let's pause the animation and then continue the tutorial. And go to frame one. And uh, let's add a new shape key. Then click uh, tab to go into edit mode. And then scale the outer circle. And then click I to keyframe. And then bake the sound to F curves. And then set it from 1000 to uh, 10,000. And uh, then bake the uh, sound. And then let's play the animation. And as you can see, it works great. So uh, now the rest of the tutorial is going to be about how to make this look as great as possible for the final render. So uh, let's pause the animation. And uh, then go into the modifiers. Let's start off by adding the subdivision surface modifier to make the surface uh, smoother. And then let's also add the solidify modifier to add some volume to the uh, mesh. So let's increase the thickness. And uh, then we can save the file before we continue. So click File, Save As, and save it wherever you want on the computer. Give it a name and then click Enter to save. And then let's add a uh, sphere. So click Add, and then add a sphere, UV sphere. And then click Yes to scale. And then go into the modifiers to add uh, the subdivision surface modifier. And then increase the amount of subdivisions. And uh, let's go to object and add smooth shading as well. And then let's go into rendered view. And then let's add a background image. So we'll go to environment texture and then click open. And you can download the HDRI image in the link below. So let's use the factory catwalk, go back to Blender, open the folder, and then open the factory catwalk background image. And then let's add a plane. So uh, go to add mesh and then add a plane. And then click G, and then set to grab it on the set axis and then click S to scale. 
so it's just a basic floor now let's select the light and then go into the light settings change it into a sun and then click r to rotate the sun and uh, let's set the strength to 25 and then let's select the floor go into the materials new material let's make it uh, glossy and let's set the uh, roughness to 0.3 uh, and let's make it dark so something like this and uh, then let's select the uh, ball or the uh, sphere click new to add a new material and then uh, let's use the uh, diffuse shader and let's make it blue what kind of shader or color you use doesn't really matter so just uh, choose a color or shader that you like so I'm going to use principled and then blue for example and then let's set up the camera so click numpad 0 to look through the camera and I click N and then lock the camera to view let's go a bit backwards and then select the camera and increase the range of the camera so let's set it to uh, 10,000 for example and uh, when we move on the timeline you can see that uh, everything looks great okay and if you want to make some uh, changes to the materials this is the time to do it because uh, now we're going to go get into the render settings and the output settings so uh, might change the color a bit and then let's get into the render settings okay so let's start off by increasing the uh, amount of samples for the final animation so uh, 100 samples both for the render and the viewport and then you can also use the bloom effect in Eevee this is optional and uh, then play around with the values and uh, see what looks great And then let's also enable screen space reflections with the uh, refraction so that we get the uh, reflection effects. And uh, let's move it backwards so that we can see the reflection. In the final animation, I didn't really use the bloom effects, but uh, I recommend playing around with the values and uh, see if you like the result okay and then let's go to the output settings and uh, let's find a folder for the final animation so just uh, add a folder wherever you want on the computer and then give the folder a name and for rendering uh, animations with music you can both render it with the PNGs and then add the sound later on in a different software or you can add the uh, sound directly to the uh, video file that you render in Blender. To add sound to the output, use the FFmpeg format, and then under encoding, use MPEG4. And then almost lossless when it comes to the compression, and then add the MP3 as well. Now let's just play the animation one more time. I think it looks okay I think I might change the color of the floor a little bit so let's go into the materials and maybe make it a bit darker but uh, that is optional and then let's create a new save so uh, go to file and then save as click on the plus sign and then save and then let's make a test render use the display mode image editor and then render image okay and uh, then we can render out the whole animation so uh, click render and then click render animation and uh, 
and uh, that's it for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and i'll post more blender 2.8 ev tutorials very soon so thank you guys for watching and subscribe